Welcome back to the channel. Over the past several videos, we've looked at a lot of Python tools that are built specifically for chemists that not only allow us to scrape PubChem using Python-based tools, but also to visualize those molecules and represent them in a number of different ways to allow us to gain a deeper understanding. And so in this case, I want to start with a question for you. If I give you three different sugars, glucose, fructose, and sucrose, and ask you to tell me which of these sugars is the most similar to glucose, I have them shown here, how would you do that? Would you look at the number of rings? Would you look at the functional groups? Would you check their molecular weight? Or would you choose to analyze them and, and see how they look in MR or mass spec or IR, Raman? There's lots of ways that you can look at this, but there's also ways that you can represent these molecules computationally that allow you to make a comparison. Let me show you. If I add a cell here to continue down our journey, and let's focus on one of our molecules. Let's, just, let's look at C1. So we have this compound data type. Look at the previous videos. You can see all the things we can do with this type. There are a number of ways we can represent them, one of which is this visual way. We've also shown canonical smiles, inky keys, but there's other things that we can do, such as representing these with a fingerprint string. And in this case, we have a binary fingerprint with one and zeros that represent this molecule. In this case, we're looking at glucose. And although this doesn't seem very human readable, this actually encodes a lot of information about the types of functional groups that are present. If we have any single bonds, triple bonds, double bonds, and all sorts of ways that allows us to then better make comparisons in a quantitative manner of these various molecules. And so let me show you, if we look at compound one versus compound three in this manner, switch to compound three. If we look at the third value here, we see for compound one, there is a zero. For compound three, there is a one. And so with these small differences, we could begin to compare these chemical fingerprints. And as an aside, there's other fingerprints you can use to make similar types of comparisons. And I'll probably explore some of those in other videos as they all have their pros and cons. But if you weren't in the chemophatic space, you might see this, or at least when I was looking at this, I'm like, oh, I can measure the cosine distance between these various points, or Euclidean distance, or computer correlation coefficient of these. And so let's do that to mathematically determine which of these molecules is most like glucose. Is it gonna be fructose or sucrose? To do that, let's use one of our go-to libraries. We have SciPy, SciPy, let's say from SciPy Spatial import distance. So this will give us access to a bunch of distance methods. And we will set distance at cosine. And let's try to compare these fingerprints. So let's just say this is F fingerprint one equals that. And fingerprint two, three equals that. And so if we attempt to compare these fingerprints, You see, we will get a value error. That's because it is saying the input vector should be a one dimensional array. And thus, let me explain what we've got here. If you look at fingerprint three, you see this is actually a string of values, although it looks like a list of numbers. However, we do need to convert these values, these strings, into that list of numbers that we thought we had. And so let's do this with a list comprehension approach. So I will write this out for one and then just copy it for the other compound fingerprints. And so in this case, let's look at, would you say, let's convert the integer value for value in, in this case, let's do C3. So we've got this. Let's see if we did it right. Yeah, we did. So you can see now we have a list of numerical values and this is what we can use to make our comparison. And now I will copy this a couple times and make the same adjustment for the other fingerprints. Let me set this equal to one. Let me set this equal to two. And now we have our three fingerprints. And so if we go back and run this comparison, we see that the cosine distance between fingerprint one and fingerprint three is 0 0.7. When you're looking at distance, the smaller that value, the more similar it is. In this case, cosine ranges between zero being completely identical and one being as far apart as you can get. And so let's compare fingerprint one and three. 
And so now that we've com compared fingerprints one and three, let's compare fingerprints one and two to see which value is smaller. Okay, so when we look at glucose versus fructose, this molecule compared to this molecule now, you see that we have a smaller value. So based on this cosine value, we would say that fingerprint two is more similar to one than it is fingerprint three. And again, visually, this makes sense. There are other ways we can compute the similarity, so you might be familiar with correlation. And so let's do the same thing. Let's look at the correlation between fingerprint one and fingerprint two. And we see that we have a correlation distance of 0 0.25. Typically, you're computing a correlation coefficient, so let's convert this to a more traditional way. Look at this. So we would say this is 0.97 or 97% correlated, so really high. And let's do the same thing for 1 versus 3. And again, slightly lower. And so now that we're measuring this correlation coefficient, we would say that, again, fingerprint 2 is more similar to 1 than is fingerprint 3. And so here's just a nice giving away to actually begin mathematically comparing these various molecules. In the next video, we'll look at a more diverse set of molecules and some other techniques that are more chemifematic specific for making these sorts of assessments. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.